So I believe this is one of the first H61 boards that I'm unboxing. So the H61 is basically like the H67 except cheaper. So there's a couple small changes, like it only supports two memory slots, unlike the H67, which supports four. And I'm pretty sure there's something else too. Oh yeah, I don't believe there's any support for SATA 3 6 gigabit per second, which to anyone buying sort of an L cheapo chipset board, Probably doesn't matter that much. So this is a gigabyte board. It features ultra durable too, which is like sort of last generation ultra durable, including uh, Japanese solid capacitors. Four plus one plus one phase power, which is pretty basic. I mean, that, okay, let's set our expectations somewhere realistic for this board. It is 2011 select, uh, uses the B3 stepping, which means that there are no issues with the SATA 2 ports. So that is really important. Basically any uh, H61, H67, P67 board you buy, you want to make sure it's using the B3 stepping. And it features a Tres Anos de Garantia, something in Spanish, which um, is interesting because this is something that I pulled out of our warehouse. But I think what they mean is three-year warranty, and uh, that applies to North America as well as Latin America as far as I know. So there you go. Nothing different other than the language. Here we got uh, dual BIOS as well as three terabyte plus hard drive support with hybrid EFI technology, which means it doesn't use a fully UEFI BIOS, but it does have some of the benefits. 108 decibel sound to noise ratio. Okay. Three times USB power, which is a really neat feature. Basically allows gigabyte boards that feature that feature to deliver more power to the USB ports, which means if you have multiple devices plugged into a hub or if you're using a high powered device, uh, that requires more energy to charge, then uh, a gigabyte board will be more capable of charging it than another board. So here there's a little warning, don't use socket 1156 CPUs, thanks gigabyte. User's manual as well as a driver and utilities DVD. One IO shield, silver. Two SATA cables, one right angle, one straight, blue. And some environmentally friendly cardboard packaging. And finally, the motherboard itself. So, basic board like this, we're not going to find any fancy schmancy heat sinks or, uh, you know, gaming features or SLI or Crossfire. We're going to find a basic board that does what it sets out to do. It is also kind of a smaller than standard micro ATX board. So you can see it has four slots like standard MATX, but it's not as wide as a normal MATX board. Let me grab one just to actually here. Here's an ATX board. Uh, no, this is an MATX board, which is also a... No, no, this might be a standard width one. No, I think this one's a little bit narrow too. Okay, give me, give me a sec. Give me a sec here, guys. There's a standard width board. So that's an ATX board, but they should be the same width. So basically what Gigabyte's doing is they're saving a little bit of money on the materials and also making it so you don't have to put in as many screws because it's a fairly basic board design, especially now that motherboards don't really have memory controllers on them or north bridges. There's a lot less logic, so you can easily build it onto a smaller PCB. So let's go and have a look at the layout. So here's our 1155 socket. The H61 chipset does not support any overclocking, so you're not going to need a whole lot more than the 4 plus 1 phase power design that it is designed to deliver. I mean, you can't overclock, okay? Even if you have an unlocked CPU, you can't overclock it, so bear that in mind. We've also got a four pin power connector up here in the top left in its ideal location. We've got two DDR3 memory slots, a 24 pin power connector over here on the right in its ideal location. We have four SATA 2 three gigabit per second ports. We have one PCIe 16X slot, and it claims ATI Crossfire X, although I can tell you guys now it's not going to perform very well because you can see that this PCIe 16X slot is only actually wired up to 4X, so you're not going to get all the bandwidth to that bottom slot, although apparently it will work in Crossfire mode should you so desire. Here we have two PCI slots, which is appropriate for a board like this because many people using these entry-level boards are going to have legacy PCI hardware that they would want to install. Uh, your front panel USB is here. There's no USB 3 on this particular motherboard. Uh, you've even got, look at that, you've got a parallel printer port header. So this is really for the upgrader market. There's your front ports, so your uh, power, reset, LEDs, uh, front panel audio, they've moved it. This is a good location for it compared to up here, which we're used to seeing on Gigabyte motherboards in the past. Here we go, we've got 
Two PS2 ports, once again, aimed at that upgrade market. VGA as well as DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort won't be necessary. Six USB 2 ports, so that coupled with the two headers gives you a total of 10 USB 2 ports. Uh, well, I guess it's gigabit ethernet. Why don't we double check that because uh, this is, like I said, pretty entry level, so it may not actually be gigabit ethernet. So we are going to consult a user's manual, which happens not very often on my show. And we're gonna find out, yeah, gigabit ethernet. There you go, Realtek gigabit ethernet. And finally, 5.1 audio out. Thank you for checking out this unboxing on Linus Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.